An oblique line segment on a coordinate plane has an x component, denoted by this distance, and a y component, this distance. We often want to know what these distances are. This would be simple if we knew the coordinates of the endpoints. We did this in TR-11. But what if we only knew the length of the oblique line segment and the angle it makes with our coordinate system? Here's a 16-foot line segment at a 54-degree angle with the horizontal axis. It represents a ladder leaning against the wall. How high up the wall does the ladder reach? And how far from the wall is the base of the ladder? We have a right triangle where we know the angle with the x-axis and the length of the hypotenuse. We want to know the length of the sides. Let's write the Sokotoa equations. Sine 54 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine 54 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's rewrite these to isolate the side lengths. Opposite equals hypotenuse times sine 54 degrees, and adjacent equals hypotenuse times cosine 54 degrees. These equations tell us that the cosine of theta is the fraction of the hypotenuse that extends in the x direction, and the sine of theta is the fraction of the hypotenuse that extends in the y direction. The sine of 54 degrees is about 0 0.81, which means that the red side is 81% of the length of the hypotenuse, or 13 feet. The cosine of 54 degrees is about 0 0.59, so the blue side is 59% of the length of the hypotenuse, or 9.4 feet. So, to find the length of a right triangle sides, multiply the hypotenuse by the angle's trig function that corresponds to the sides you're interested in. Sine for the side opposite the angle, cosine for the side adjacent to the angle. So the answers to our questions are 13 feet for the distance up the wall, and 9.4 feet to the base of the ladder. This side is 81% the length of the hypotenuse because the sine of this angle is 0 0.81. This side is 59% the length of the hypotenuse because the cosine of this angle is 0 0.59. Let's generalize again. Here's a vector v. What are the expressions for the vector's component v sub x and v sub y? We're used to seeing the vertical components over here to make a triangle, but of course it's the same length over here. In physics and engineering, this is the way vector components are shown, so they all have the same initial point. The solutions are the general forms of the equation, v sub x equals v cosine theta, and v sub y equals v sine theta. These expressions are used by physics and engineering students to find the components of vectors in directions more convenient than the directions in which they were given. Breaking down a vector like this is called decomposing or resolving a vector, and it's the most common use of trigonometry, at least for first-year technical students. As always, be careful to notice which angle you're given. The typical association that cosine has with horizontal and sine has with vertical is only true when the angle is in standard position. Here are some more examples for you to try. For each diagram, find expressions for the lowercase orthogonal components of the uppercase yellow vector. No calculators, just show the proper expression using sine and cosine. Let's do the first one together. We can express m and j in terms of a and the trig function of beta. j is adjacent to beta, so j equals a cosine beta. M is the same length as this segment, which is opposite to beta, so M equals A sine beta, and J equals A cosine beta. Pause if you like to work out the rest. The ones on the right side might be a little tricky. I'll show the remaining answers all at once, and that will be the end of this video. In the next video, TR-18, we'll create the graphs of the sine and cosine functions.